Every now and again, I hear a phrase or an idea which sticks in my brain. I've been mulling over this one for a while now. It came from this book, The Ascent of Man by Jacob Bronowski, an interesting read which also has a television series of the same name. The series and book deal with the history of our species and focuses on scientific discoveries, technology and art. The thing which stuck in my head is the idea of Guardians of Integrity, which Bronowski saw himself as being. This resonates with my own view of how anyone in a position of influence ought to behave. Whether we are teachers, journalists, newsreaders, researchers, scientists or theologians, we have a duty of care to report our findings accurately and honestly. If a teacher doesn't know something, there may well be a temptation to just make something up. It is my contention that they should resist this urge. A friend of mine used to be a tour guide and frequently made up fanciful stories when he reached the edge of what he actually knew about the local history. You might wonder, what's the harm with that? To me, it's the principle of the thing. I don't think anyone benefits from being fed false information. It is for this reason that I oppose young earth creationism and conspiracy theories so strongly. Both of those require a wholesale rejection of the scientific method. The closer you examine the claims of people like Alex Jones and Ken Ham, the more shallow research and false conclusions you will find, often portrayed with a false air of authority, as if these guys actually know what they're talking about. We all know that there's a lot wrong with the world today. Wars, inequality, famine, pollution and terrorism to name but a few. But what of the good things? If we watch the TV news we don't hear so much of that. We are bombarded with stories of kidnap, rape, beheadings and all manner of depressing and nasty stuff. Statistically we are less likely to be killed violently than in past history. The per capita death toll of wars is steadily declining, even if the actual numbers are rising. Keep in mind that the world population nearly quadrupled in the 20th century. Now, the rise in population can be cross-matched with the improvement of sanitation, healthcare and technology. Infant mortality has declined significantly compared with a hundred years ago. Along with technology, Access to information and the ability to learn about the world and how it works has become available to nearly everyone, whether through schools, libraries and museums, or, more recently, TV and the internet. There is enormous potential for nearly everyone to have access to good and accurate information, which is where the idea of guardians of integrity comes in. We all know that there are snake oil salesmen such as fake faith healers and pyramid sales scammers. But the question is how to recognize these and help others to avoid them. Guardians of integrity are people who genuinely care about what is true and oppose those who are dishonestly trying to relieve people of their hard-earned cash, simply to line their own pockets. To me, integrity, transparency and accountability are things worth striving towards provided that we have a desire to make this world a better place. To those who lack compassion and empathy, these ideals will be meaningless. But to awaken these qualities within people who don't have them is something which fascinates me. How to do it? How to ignite the spark of curiosity and how to encourage people to give a damn about the well-being of others are not things I claim to have a good solution for other than the idea that we can lead by example. Those of you who know me know that I'm not remotely religious. However, I recognize some of the qualities I think are worth striving towards in religious people. Some of the teachings found within some of the religious holy books are undoubtedly good ones. As such, I don't oppose religion as a whole and positively encourage what some people might call Christ-like behavior. Unfortunately though, there are many religionists who claim to be representing Jesus or Allah whose behavior is anything but Christ-like. Unfortunately, the holy books are often confusing to those who read them. 
I will focus on the Bible because that is the one I'm most familiar with. The Bible describes a tribal God in the Old Testament who commands his chosen people to commit genocide many times. The so-called promised land is already inhabited, but those people are evil and expendable, according to the stories. In the New Testament, Jesus is portrayed as being the earthly manifestation of the same God, yet now he's promoting non-violent opposition to the religion and government of the Roman Empire, who happened to be occupying and in control of the promised Holy Land. Violence in the Old Testament, non-violence in the New. I can only speculate about how much or little of these stories is accurate history. For example, when Jesus supposedly says, A person's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who comes to me without hating father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, and his own life too, cannot be my disciple. One of the strangest things to me when it comes to modern Christians is how few of them are prepared to consider the possibility that some of the teachings attributed to Jesus in the Bible might have been embellished or altered after the event. Nearly all of them seem to assume that a historical Jesus really did say and do all of those things in the third and fourth decade of the first century. Part of the idea of a guardian of integrity is to be as clear as possible when teaching that there is a difference between what we believe and what we know. All too often I hear religious teachers making bold assertions about things which they cannot possibly be certain of. I would like to encourage religious teachers to be honest and transparent when it comes to the difference between what they believe and what they know, and for the followers to hold their teachers accountable. I mentioned museums before. One of the biggest travesties I'm aware of is so-called creation museums, such as the one in Kentucky, run as an amalgam of church and business by Ken Ham's organisation Answers in Genesis. I claim it's a travesty because it portrays a view of the universe which is seriously at odds with modern science and scholarship, and does so with an implied but false claim to actually be representing the truth of reality. It appeals to children and teaches them falsehoods about what science is and how it works. It is my contention that anyone who sets up a museum has a duty of care to create an honest and factually accurate presentation, not one in which humans and dinosaurs coexisted and the universe is claimed to be 2.3 million times younger than the latest age estimates of science. We don't see flat earth museums. I submit that the only reason young earth proponents get away with this is because they smuggle the conspiracy theory of what they regard as anti-god science in with their religion. People are reluctant to openly criticise religion a lot of the time. Ken Ham and his ilk are keen to pull the religious persecution card, even though most critics would be happy if he simply stuck to his religion and didn't try to undermine science. He could start by renaming his facility as an exhibition of young earth creationism and making sure every paying visitor was aware of the fact that most of the exhibits are opposed by the scientific community and that this includes millions of Bible-believing Christians. Anyway, enough about Ken Ham. Some of you might wonder how I derive what we ought to do in certain situations particularly when it comes to judging what is right and wrong without recourse to a God belief. I'm continually surprised by how many non-believers seem to agree with the believers that there are such things as absolute and objective morality. What they rarely seem to do is to take a step back and recognise that we have a human-centric sense of morality. Being species-specific, this is not an objective standard. We tend to think of actions which cause harm to others, whether directly or indirectly, as being morally bad. Those who eat meat and think about it at all must come to the realisation that such eating habits don't conform with chicken-centric or pig-centric senses of morality. Therefore, at least half of the human population cannot claim to be upholding genuinely objective morality. 
Before I go, I would like to thank all of my new subscribers for clicking that button, even though it's been ages since I made a video. As usual, I have lots of video ideas, but not enough time to make them, so my output is somewhat sporadic.